Good. You know, we're here once again today to make sure a cop killer, a true cop killer, is not released onto our streets. We've come many times to this building so that the family of police officer Piagentini and his partner, Sir, partner Jones, can give their victim impact statement and tell their story. At one time, it was almost routine. Tell our stories just to make sure, but they won't release them because why would society want a cop killer on the street? Well, we know now that they've released Bell. And we know now that there's no common sense in this building in those commissioners. So now we cannot take it for granted and we will not take it for granted. We're here today to tell the story of this family and of this police officer who gave his life in the line of duty. And we're not sure if these commissioners upstairs will hear it or will they make that mistake again and release another cop killer onto the street, a domestic terrorist from the BLA. Today, when police officers, and you can hear the sirens, are running back and forth to subway stations because there's rice cookers placed on the platforms. Why? To create terror, to make people think there's something wrong, to put fear in their hearts. Terrorism didn't start on September 11th of 2001. Way back in 1971, there were terrorists that killed our police officers and struck fear in the hearts of all New Yorkers. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about bottom. We're gonna be talking about a terrorist and we have to make sure that he's not released onto this street. We also are concerned because now this family has seen the transcript of the last hearing. And in that transcript, Commissioner Shapiro asked this perp the questions. But the strange part, Commissioner Shapiro also answered those questions, feeding the answers so she can vote to release this terrorist out onto the streets. There's something wrong in the parole system. There's something wrong with these parole commissioners. And we as the don't release this cop killer, this domestic terrorist, onto our street. It's my honor today, on behalf of all of these police officers that stand behind me, the police officers that are in these radio cars, the police officers today that are standing guard at those subway stations, and him with the revolver and continuously shot him. My husband was so brave, he did not want to leave us. But this man ended his life in a horrendous way. And this man also shot his partner, Waverly Jones, in the back. This was a coward. He did a cowardly thing. And this was all done for, for his policies, which he has not given up. I want to talk about Joe. And I want to say, these are the children that Anthony Bottom took away took away their father. Joe is, will never, ever come home. I want the parole board to know that under the blue uniform, there was a good, loving, intelligent man who took an oath to protect and to serve on the streets of Harlem. He worked in the 3-2 precinct. He did that. He loved his job, he walked the beat, and he died on the street of Harlem, answering a call for help. Anthony Bottom assassinated my husband and Waverly Jones because they wore the blue uniform. We need to remember that under the uniform, there is a person doing their job, protecting you, and wanting to return home to their families when the day is done. Joe will never come home. We are still waiting for him in our hearts. Therefore, Anthony Bottom should never get out of jail till Joe comes home.
deny parole. The commissioners on the parole board need to continuously deny parole. Thank you. Mrs. Piagentini, thank you for telling a story that no one can tell except for you and your family. We can't take this for granted. We've asked for the public's help before, and they responded, sending over 800,000 petitions to the parole board to make sure this cop killer does not get out of prison. Let's not take it for granted. Please, we need your help again. We always need your help. Take the time. Go on, keep cop killers in jail on the New York City PBA website and press that icon to make sure these parole commissioners understand none of us want this cop killer on the street. And we have to make them understand that. So please go on. We ask for your help again. Help your New York City police officers. They help you every day. We're respectfully asking your help again. Please send this message to these parole commissioners. Questions? Yes, sir. Yes, I absolutely believe there's an atmosphere where folks are forgetting the terrorists that were on our streets before September 11th that were gunning down New York City police officers. Remember, they do that for, for a reason. We are a symbol of our government. And if you'll kill a police officer, it strikes fear in everyone's heart. If a police officer doesn't have a chance, the citizens don't. So I think folks are forgetting how dangerous the streets were and the blood that was shed to make them safe. We don't want it to go back to those days. We have to be vigilant. But because they've made mistakes in the past by releasing these cop killers and terrorists onto the streets, it has to stop now. We know it's been a mistake in the past. Today, let's make the right decision and keep this murderer behind bars. Thank you, everyone. Yes, sir. We talk about a multitude of issues, including this. He's as outraged as anyone else, where he, for many years he carried a shield, wore that shield on his chest before becoming a uh, police commissioner in the city of New York. He's in full support of this. Keep these cop killers in prison, because he will also have to deal with them in full support and agreements. I have not. My message to them is, if you haven't done it, Sit in front of that computer, send that letter, make that call. Call the governor's office and make sure his parole commissioners don't let this cop killer out onto the street. Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. Well, first off, obviously what's getting done is not working. So we have to try every way there is to do it. Sometimes it's the shock folks. We're not reaching people. Nine police officers have taken their own lives. So we have to try every avenue to do that. So we've pointed out the mistakes. We also have the solution. Maybe we'll get there. We hear the mayor saying there's a problem with our health care that doesn't cover it. We've been saying it for years. Well, now let's solve the problem. Let's stand and resolve it. Let's change it so that police officers can afford to do it. Go get the help that they need and please get that help. We need to do that, number one. We need, meet, need to make the police department more understanding of the things that police officers go through. To look at police officers like they're standing straight always on the corner. But like Mr. Piagentini said, when they go home, there's a heart under that. The same issues that you deal with, we deal with. Trying to pay the mortgage, family issues, mental health issues. We have to help them to do that. So the job has to be understanding and work with us when we're in that situation. The city has to give us the health care that would cover it, and it has to be anonymous. It cannot affect our employment, where police officers are afraid to come forward because they'll be stigmatized and possibly lose their employment. It's important. I don't say don't call. Stop riding on that crisis. Let's sit down at the table and solve that crisis because we can. What about the, the, like that? I know a lot of officers are afraid to leave out 
That's right. It helps because we've tried the other tone and everyone hears things differently. Please reach out. The soft approach works on some folks. A harder direct approach works on others. So between all of us, we have to reach every police officer. So I'll do and say whatever it is to get in the heart and mind of that police officer so they make the right decision. The right decision is seek help, come to us and we'll help you. If it's shocking to do that, then we'll have to do that because obviously we're not getting there. Between all of us, hopefully we'll get there, but the work's not done, far from done. Yes, we have to destigmatize it for police officers. We cannot hold up their career when they do come up uh, getting help. We have to give them real outside professional help to make sure they can go anonymously and feel safe enough to tell their story and get the help. We don't have that now. It's not working. So if the mayor is now saying we do something, well, let's do it. I'm ready. Get at the table. We've asked before. It hasn't been done. We can do it now. We know what the mistakes that have been made. Let's fix it. I'm willing and able. Our members need it. Let's do it. Well, well, we see it as an issue on all ends of a police officer's career. We've had younger, newer police officers take their own lives, and we had very senior police officers of many ranks take their own lives. So it has to be a multifaceted approach that reaches everyone. Each one of you are different. Each one of us are different. So we have to keep trying and reevaluating what we're doing. We know what's not working, so let's get to a new idea and get it done. I believe we can get there. It's more than just talking. It's saying, here's the plan, move forward with the plan. I'm awaiting that call from City Hall to say, here's the plan, let's do it. We'll put our heads together and we'll try to make it work. Thank you, everyone.